Now we're talking about the greatest of examples, the greatness of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and his love for his spouse when a man loves a woman and the greatest of examples of men for us is the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now we've looked at the importance of his sunnah, his modality of life, we looked at how it's important to relate to one another and some of the, the statements that we find in the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as it relates uh, to these important principles. Let's look also at uh, you know some of the more controversial issues, uh, and some of them really relate to who can I listen to, who can be my advisor, should I really share everything with my spouse, are they a part of my life that I can confide in them things that I'm fearful of, things that I worry about. When you look at the Prophet Sallallahu example with many of his different spouses, you find that this was a solid example of his conduct. On the day when the Prophet set out to make Hajj, and he was confronted by an army of the Mushrikeen of Mecca who barred him from it, he had seen previously a dream that Allah records to us in Surah Al-Fatih, إِنَّا فَتَحْنَا لَكَ فَتْحًا مُبِينًا We have granted you a great opening, you will return to Mecca. You will have You will have your hairs shaved off after Hajj, or some of you have trimmed it. Allah foretold this to the Messenger of Islam. And all of a sudden they were barred. And they made a peace treaty between the Prophet Islam and him on the condition that he cannot make Hajj that year, he has to return home. And the Sahaba were upset. Umar radiallahu anhu and Abu Bakr, the leaders of the Sahaba, they came. They said, Ya Rasulullah, Alam takum Rasulullah, so I said, aren't you the messenger of Allah? And he says, yes, so I said. Did not Allah promise you victory? The Prophet says, yes. Didn't you see in a dream? Didn't we come this way? Don't you know that we will be victorious? Let's go forward and if they stop us, we will fight them and the victory of Allah will be with us. And the Prophet doesn't respond and goes to his room, his tent. And in it is Umm Salama radiallahu anha wa ta'ala. And the Prophet is distressed. He says, what am I going to do with people who have not listened to my instruction? I told them, cut your hair, this is our hajj, it's accepted the way it is. Nobody has followed. What am I going to do, Ya Musa? She says to me, Ya Rasulullah, let me shave your head. This is my advice to you. You shave your head and walk out with it. See what happens. So she brings the razor, she cuts the hair of the Prophet them, and the Prophet doesn't have to say another word. He walks out, all of the Sahaba see that he has finished his ihram, he's changed his clothes, he's put on perfume, they all look to one another and they all run to their wives and spouses do to me what the wife of the Prophet ﷺ did to him. Everyone cut their hair, everyone followed his example Muhammad The deb deliberations of the Prophet ﷺ with his wife is not unique. It's the same thing that you see years earlier with Khadija radiallahu anha wa Allah. Khadija accepts the Prophet ﷺ and was his greatest confidant, his greatest advisor. She would say to him, continue in your speech. I will defend you with my wealth. I will defend you with my health. I will defend you with my life. ﷺ. Continue. She would take him to her cousin. What do you think of what he has received? The Namus, the Jibreel returning. To, to this human uh, uh, humanness of ours with a new testament from Allah. She worked to further the agenda of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and the system of Iman that was delivered to him by Allah Azza wa Jal. And therefore you find that the Prophet Sallallahu never held back in his discussions with his spouse. Whether it was about actions of faith or conduct, whether it was about you know, uh, opinions or legal reasonings, he would always discuss it with his spouse, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Something else we see in the love that the Prophet sallallahu would show to his spouse was his kindness. 
and his generosity with his time. And one of the things, you go anywhere in the world, I travel many places, everywhere you go, the number one thing that the sisters ask for is time. It's not money. It's not, I haven't bought this or I don't have this. It's time. We don't have enough time with the kids, with each other. Time where you're not busy with a, a laptop or a computer or the internet or TV. Time where it's not just that you're sitting while we're sitting, but it's time where we are engaged together. Uh, husbands sometimes, uh, we don't understand this. We think, you say, what do you mean? I've been home all day. Yeah, but you've been home doing what? On the phone, on the computer, on the TV, uh, on the Quran. Could be something good as well. On the Quran, on a hadith. I'm going to the jama. Okay, you went to the jama, prayed Maghrib, then what? Oh, well, I stood and talked. We had some tahtarik. Right? And we went and had some, you know. Oh, and you're going to stay till Isha. Oh, yes, after Isha. Then what? I'll come home soon, soon, inshallah. Traffic is a big problem. No. Look at the example of the Prophet I said with this one. And Imam al Bukhari reports for those of you who have visited the masjid of the Prophet, you know the separation between his masjid and his house. The house of Aisha was a curtain, a door, just one foot in it. We know that the sunnah of the Prophet is not to pray any prayers in the masjid except the fard, the wajib. So you pray Maghrib, but you don't pray the two rakah in the masjid. What do you do? You run home. You pray Isha, what do you do? Run home. You pray Fajr, what do you do? Run home. Right? The Prophet ﷺ didn't sit unless there was a reason to sit. Unless there was a cause to sit. Well, what about the extra prayers that we hear? The Prophet used to pray. What you find when you look in the hadith, you don't see the regular Sahaba reporting. You never read a hadith of Umar telling you how many rak'ah the Prophet ﷺ prayed to Hajj. Who do you learn it from? Aisha. Aisha radiallahu anha. Because she's the only one that used to see it. She's the only one who lived in his home. How do we know this? The house of the Prophet ﷺ was small. And when it came time to pray at night, when Aisha would be sleeping, and the Prophet wanted to make sujood, he would have to tap her foot. He would wake her up a little. She would bring her feet up to her chest so that there can be room for the Prophet to make sujood. And then when he stands up again to read Quran, she would put her legs out again. You would say, why is the Prophet every 15 minutes, 20 minutes waking up his wife? Why not just step outside? Here's his masjid. One minute, one, one step out of his home. Why not pray in the open masjid? Because the Prophet ﷺ enjoyed the company of his home, filled his home with his presence and his barakah. And therefore, when you understand this, you understand the other hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, where he says, the house where the remembrance of Allah is not made is a graveyard. What does it mean, the remembrance of Allah? Salah, Quran, Tazkirah, Hadith. That was done in his home with who? His wife. You hear of this from the example of those who lived with him intimately, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. As we proceed, inshallah, in our, after the short break, we will continue to learn of some of the inner behaviors of the Prophet sallallahu that projected more and more love for his wife and his wives, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Please join us again.